Imagine a hidden link that could rewrite the annals of ancient history. A connection so profound that it challenges our understanding of power and religion in one of the world's oldest civilizations. In 1989, the discovery of Upper El's tomb revealed not just a minister of Akhenaten, but an Israelite in the heart of Pharaoh's court. This startling revelation opens the door to a forgotten chapter of Egyptian-Israelite relations and sets the stage for a broader exploration into how this connection might have influenced Akhenaten's radical religious reforms. Unveiling Upper El the Israelite Minister in Pharaoh's Court in 1989, French archaeologist Alan Zivi discovered the tomb of Akhenaten's chief minister Upper El. Remarkably, Upper El appears to have been an Israelite, according to Graham Phillips in Act of God. This discovery is significant as it provides a tangible link between the ancient Israelites and the Egyptian ruling class, suggesting that Israelites held significant positions of power and influence during Akhenaten's reign. This challenges traditional narratives and offers new insights into the interactions between the Israelites and Egyptians, potentially reshaping our understanding of this historical period. The revelation of Upper El's Israelite identity suggests a deeper connection between the Israelites and the Egyptian elite. This connection becomes even more significant when we consider the Hyksos influence on Akhenaten's policies and religious reforms. The term Israelite itself warrants clarification, particularly regarding its origin. Contrary to the biblical association with Jerusalem, none of the cities of the Hyksos pharaohs and their people bore the name Israel. It is contested that the term originated with the Irish and Phoenicians, who established prominent cities throughout Eastern Europe, Asia Minor, and the Levant. The Phoenicians, originally of Irish extraction, had significant bases in Ireland and Scotland. They were expert sailors and utilized land bridges that once connected Scandinavia to England and England to Ireland. One of the chief gods of the megalithic Irish was known as Aisa, a name rendered in various forms, such as Isa, Isus, Yisu, Isa, and Jesse. Aisa was part of the ancient Druidic trinity, equivalent to the Christian Holy Spirit and Christ. Thus, an Israelite was originally an Esite, Esite, or Esalite. Some Phoenicians used the term in reference to their goddess Cronus, a Grecian rendering of the Irish god Krom or Krom Kruach. This implies that the Chaldeo Phoenician tribes worshipped Cronus Saturn long before the introduction of Jehovah. The name Israel has since been misappropriated with biblical Christians identifying as Israelites, inadvertently aligning themselves with a pagan deity. Alternative historian Commons Beaumont in The Riddle of Prehistoric Britain explained the Phoenician origins of Israel. According to Beaumont, it wasn't until Jacob was instructed to call himself Israel that the name was adopted and given to his twelve sons. However, Sanchoniathon, a Phoenician from Tyre, stated that Cronus, whom Phoenicians called Israel, was the king of Phoenicia. This suggests that the tribes worshipped Cronus Saturn long before the biblical Jehovah. Douglas Reed argued that many Jewish people are descendants of religious converts with no Israelite ancestry. Even those with Israelite lineage are descendants of the house of Judah, not the house of Israel. Unveiling the true legacy of Israel from Hyksos Pharaohs to Akhenaten's revolution. There was indeed an Israel, as evidenced by the name used at the close of the Late Bronze Age on an Egyptian monument referring to the people of Canaan. However, this is not the Israel of the Bible, according to Thomas L. Thompson in The Mystic Past. Ahmed Osman in Moses and Akhenaten insists there was no Israelite priesthood before the time of Moses. Researcher Ralph Ellis rejects the traditional story of Abraham and Sarah's migration from Samaria to Egypt. Instead, he argues that Abraham, from Abram, meaning of Ra the father, was the first pharaoh of the Hyksos dynasty. According to Ellis, Abraham and his wife Sarah traveled to Thebes in southern Egypt after a famine struck their northern kingdom. The Theban king, identified as Tutmosis III, fell in love with Sarai and took her as his wife. Ellis suggests that it was Tutmosis III, not Abraham, who fathered the so-called 12 tribes of Israel, which were actually the 12 tribes of Aten. The Hyksos, ruling in the north, lower Egypt Delta region, controlled the pyramids and Heliopolis, the center of solar worship. This connection explains Akhenaten's fervor for solar worship. 
Ellis also proposes that before Akhenaten's reign, the Levite Yuya, the biblical Joseph, acted as an agent for the expelled Hyksos and returned to gain favor with Pharaoh Aminotep I. Yuya succeeded and became a powerful influence behind the thrones of Tutmosis III, Tutmosis IV, Aminotep III, and Akhenaten. Yuya and his family were the wealthiest individuals in the world at that time, second only to the Pharaoh himself. Ralph Ellis writes, Egypt had been a relatively stable society for thousands of years, both before and after this rebel pharaoh. The capital cities, temples, gods, arts, and social grades of the empire had changed little. Aachen Aten would change them all. His whole career was out of the ordinary. Jesus, last of the pharaohs. Unveiling Aachen Aten, the Hyksos bloodline behind Egypt's most controversial pharaoh. Aachen Aten, according to both the revised biblical history and the king lists of Egypt, was a direct descendant of the Hyksos pharaohs, who were so strongly influenced by the priest of Heliopolis. This deity had to be a direct result of their influence. It is simply the Hyksos belief system under another name. Aachen Aten's father, Aminotep III, must have had many sympathies with his beliefs in the Aten as well, but he never dared openly to promote this new cult. Ralph Ellis, Jesus, Last of the Pharaohs. An independent cult of Ray continued to exist at Heliopolis, no doubt resenting the wealth and power of the Amun priests and Thebs. It was to them that Akhenaten seems to have been appealing. Indeed, he seems actually to have been influenced by the cult of Ray, as there are a number of uniquely Heliopolitan traits in Atenism. It seems likely, therefore, that Akhenaten's ideas were formulated in Heliopolis, Graham Phillips' Act of God. Ralph Ellis rightly ponders why modern Egyptologists have been so conspicuously silent or vague about the Hyksos dynasty. Even today, there are those that would argue that you can suspect that the descendants of the Hyksos, Levite pharaohs, are still at the helm of the world's establishments, and prefer things to be that way they would naturally be most anxious to conceal their Egyptian connections. But most importantly, if correct, it follows that Akhenaten was himself related to the Hyksos. This would go a long way to explain his characteristic hubris and undisguised contempt for Egyptian gods and lifestyle. It accounts for his 16-year desecration, for the fact that he disdained mummification, banned graphic depictions of anyone or anything but himself, closed all temples, ceased funding the priests of Amun, he moved his capital from Thebes to Amarna, and that he opened a new burial site for his family in the Valley of the Kings. Joseph Yuya, the Levite infiltrator, was suggestively buried not in the Valley of the Nobles, but in the most illustrious Valley of the Kings. His tomb there was the grandest ever found with the exception of that belonging to Tutankhamun, his beloved nephew. Tuya's mummy had been found with that of her husband Yuya in their small joint tomb in the Valley of the Kings. Their son-in-law, Aminotep III, had honored them with a grand burial, filled the tomb with fabulous gold coffins and death masks, a gilded chariot, inlaid furniture, well-stuffed cushions, a jewel casket and wig box, perfume jars and sandals. Yuya in particular regarded as the best preserved Egyptian mummy. Both he and his wife also have bright yellow hair, originally taken as evidence for their supposed foreign origins. Equally perhaps, it may have been the effect of embalming fluids on their otherwise white hair, or evidence of a pale henna rinse. Dr. Joanne Fletcher, The Search for Nefertiti Tutmosis IV highly favored Yuya, bestowing upon him immense wealth in addition to what he already possessed as a Hyksos prince. The depiction of Joseph as an impoverished and of low status is a deliberate distortion of historical facts. Joseph's primary goal was to see his own son become pharaoh, a dream that came close to fruition when his daughter Tai married the romantic and indulgent Aminotep III. This pharaoh, who may have served as a prototype for the biblical king Solomon, was known as the dazzling sun disk of all the land. It is likely that Hyksos blood was reintroduced into the Thutmoses dynasty, if it wasn't already there, as both pharaoh Aminotep II and Aminotep III had Hyk in their royal titles. Aminotep II was even called the Hyksos king of Heliopolis. It seems clear that the Levite Yuya was a high-ranking Atonist. As we delve deeper into the enigmatic life of Upper El and the Hyksos dynasty's influence on Akhenaten, 
we uncover a tapestry of historical intrigue and interconnected legacies. The true extent of these ancient links between Israelites and Egyptian rulers continues to elude our complete understanding. Yet each new piece of evidence reshapes our view of history. The question remains, will these revelations prompt a re-examination of the established narratives and lead us to a more nuanced understanding of the ancient world? Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, like, and share the video. Until next time.